A1GP commentator John Watson is a former race winner here at Zandvoort. And who better to give him some modern day advice than local hero Jeroen Blekemolen. In last year's race you had a great result, but the biggest result I felt was when you got out of the car and the 70,000 Dutch fans around the circuit, they went mad for your drive. Yeah, it was incredible, you know, all the build up to the race was for me very special because I jumped in the car last minute. And not only that, you got out of the car, you ran across the racetrack, you started to climb the safety fencing, you were Spider-Man. Normally I try to, to be cool and take it easy and I'm never like that, but it just happened. As soon as I got close to the fence, I just went up there and I wanted to shake everybody's hands, basically. Big act to follow for this year, isn't it? Well, I hope we can do it again, that would be nice. Tarzan Corner is the most famous corner on the Zandvoort circuit. You're the local boy, you've got the local knowledge. What's the right line? Well, I don't want to tell my competitors, of course, but OK, I'm going to tell you. Um, yeah, it's a diff difficult corner. The best is to turn in early, go onto the inside and stay there, which is normally the fastest. You're the guy who went round the outside of three cars during the feature race. So how come you can do that? Well, the good thing is that it's got quite a lot of camber. So when you take the corner high, there's a lot of grip. So even if you run it high, you can overshoot the corner a little bit, break too late, but just make it, and then still have the speed to carry on and, and take somebody on the outside. Give me your tip for this corner. Well, break as late as you can. Maybe you break a little too late. You will nearly overshoot it, but you can still make it, and that's the fastest to go. I'll, I'll, I think I'll take my own advice on that one. And wouldn't you know it, on Saturday morning, the heavens opened and we've got a saturated racetrack. And believe me, at the minute, Zandvoort is slippery city. So the lines that I was given to go around Tarzan Corner are meaningless. And into turn three as well, meaningless. All you can do is pull the steering wheel as gently in your hands, turning in here to the Hoogenhul Serpent Bend, hardly any throttle at all. And then when you exit the corner, you have to short shift. Not maximum RPM, probably only half the available RPM. And then up into turn five, 240 kilometers per hour if you're on it. But in these conditions, it's a bit slower. Drop down the hill, slight compression, and then immediately you're into turn six. This is a corner that exits and exits and finally exits into turn seven. Again, gentle on the steering wheel, gentle on the throttle. Turn eight was the corner that gave me the most grip but generally the circuit is absolutely slippery and you have to once again just short shift all the way down, turning into turn nine. No grip turning in and even less grip when you go from right to left and less grip again on the exit under power. Then second gear, forget it. Third gear, still got wheel spin all the way down to turn 10. Settle the car entering turn 10, let it go out to the edge of the track but watch again for the back end wanting to swap with the front of the car. And then finally turn 11 and on the exit for the first time in a lap, I could get full throttle. Zandvoort Holland, the venue for A1GP's first race day of the new season on pole for the sprint team South Africa. Let's take you trackside and join our commentary team of John Watson and Ben Edwards for the first of the race day action. We came in a little bit earlier on this morning. Uh, it was a bit cloudy, a bit overcast. There were still some question marks as to whether we were going to see some rain for either the sprint or feature races. But actually, as we approached the time of the sprint race this morning, John, things were looking good. And, and for once, it looked like we were going to see the cars on slick tyres. Yes, it was. And the clouds started to break up. There's still quite a wind blowing. But we're beginning to see hints of blue sky, which, of course, uh, is how the story has developed. But of course, for everybody, virtually running blind in this sprint race. They haven't had any dry running here at all. It's a two-day event, this opening round of A1GP and Zandvoort for reasons which were beyond our control and therefore everybody had to sort of stick the tail on the donkey and hope they get it right. Well, just to uh, fully update you with what happened in qualifying, we saw what happened at the top end. There were one or two people who'd had dramas. Canada had an accident in the morning practice. The car was completed only just in time for a one run in qualifying for the sprint race. They then managed to do quite well in qualifying for the feature race. So Canada would uh, be starting down in 21st position on the grid for the sprint race. Malaysia were also a lot further down than expected. They really seemed to struggle in the wet conditions, which was a surprise. Alex Young, one of the most experienced competitors in A1 GP, he and engineer Greg Wheeler just could not seem to find a way to make the car work, but they weren't the only ones, were they? No, it was a story pretty much through the field. One or two get, did get it right, South Africa notably, and France, Germany and Great Britain in that final qualifying segment for the feature race. 
but generally speaking people would go through the entire range of springs and nothing made any difference the fundamental problem I think was that people couldn't go quickly enough to get heat into the tires to get the grip and if they couldn't get the heat they couldn't get the grip and therefore it was one of those vicious circles they couldn't get out of well, and we had five new drivers coming into the sprint race as well. Sergio Jimenez for Brazil, Eric Yanis for the Czech Republic, Chris Alajajian for Lebanon, Buddy Rice for the United States, and Satrio Hermanto for Indonesia. Over 100 drivers will have raced in A1GP at the end of this weekend. Let's see what happened in the sprint race. Cars are lining up on the grid as we prepare for the opening race of the new season of A1GP World Cup of Motorsport. And it's a fantastic scene alongside the beach here in Zandvoort. There's the man that so many fans are cheering on, your own Blika Moll. And let's hear from team boss Jan Lammers. Yeah, and this is a race you've been waiting for for a year now. Back here at Zandvoort, I know you've not qualified where you'd hope to be, but the atmosphere has been electric. Absolutely, and uh, very proud to be here again, very grateful to A1 that they pulled us through, uh, you know, the off-season and we're on the grid again and growing, so that's wonderful. The skies are getting blue and I hope that's a sign for our team because it hasn't been too great, but uh, Jeroen is a great guy, he's always been doing a great job for us, so I hope he has his moment of glory here on home ground, that would be a great, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, paying respect to all the spectators that have been so supportive of us, up. so we hope we can do it here. Well, wherever we go in the world, I don't think there's any more supportive crowd than the Dutch fans. And it's wonderful to see them turning out in their thousands once again. But there's the man who'll be starting from pole position for Team South Africa. It is Adrian Zaub looking for back-to-back -back sprint race victories here in Zandvoort. Up against him, the Frenchman Loic Duval alongside on the front row of the grid. That could be the tussle down towards the first corner at Tarzan. And there's a man with a lot resting on his shoulders defending the crown for Team Germany, the new lad. Christian Vitoris who will be hoping to do something from sixth place on the grid so he's got some work to do here this afternoon let's take a look at how the grid lines up the cars are already about to set off on their formation lap here so quickly let's run down the starting order it's South Africa and France on the front row the second row Mexico and Switzerland both potential race winners I would say and then we've got the Netherlands starting on the third row the host nation with Germany alongside Ireland and New Zealand together on the fourth row on the fifth row we've got Portugal and Great Britain then it's India and Brazil followed by Italy and the Czech Republic China and Pakistan are next ahead of Australia and Lebanon USA and Malaysia Canada and Indonesia the cars heading round on the lap and we're almost ready to go racing they begin to pick up the pace out of the final corner now they need to be in good formation to be given the start signal it's a bit messy are they released I think they are green flag flies it's a France making a good start oh Mexico trying to squeeze down the inside and look a lock up there from Switzerland on the outside but Adrian's out for South Africa leads through the first corner well that was very close indeed because you could see that Mexico dived down the inside look at Holland takes a place away from Switzerland so up to fourth place for the Netherlands the Netherlands Euro Bleakamol and he'll get a big cheer here at Zandvoort for that and he's gained a position on the run through the first couple of corners Germany got away well Italy trying to make up places trying to squeeze past Portugal and Indonesia towards the back solving their problems that they had on the grid so they're running and the Netherlands trying another move on Mexico well if you're going to get it done I said the first lap was the best lap that Jerome Bleakamolan had to make up positions he did it he's, no he's not I was just defending he was defending that fourth place that's right yes I thought so for a moment as well but he dropped a bit of time and he had to then defend from Switzerland. Switzerland follows the Netherlands. Then it's Germany and Ireland and the black beauty of New Zealand, I thought for a moment, might be trying to squeeze past Ireland, but he wasn't quite able to do it. Well, it's all a bit frantic in this opening lap, but it's clear that South Africa have taken advantage of that pole position with France behind, but the battle going on for third and fourth place as we watch diving China dives down the inside and the Czech Republic side by side in turn nine. Oh, this is good stuff. Frankie Chen for China on the outside, but here comes the new boy, Chris Alajadjian for the Lebanon, and he managed to get past both of them. That was very good driving, good thinking from the Lebanese driver to do so. He saw those two cars battle, he knew they would hold up each other, and he took advantage and got the run and got the two positions well that's a good debut for Chris Alajadjian for Lebanon and uh, look at them all moving around trying to gain position he's now under attack 
again from the Czech car. Eric Yanis for the Czech Republic, but he can't do it. And here comes Alex Young now for Malaysia, and trying Adam, to go around the outside. Adam Khan for Pakistan also getting involved in that three-way mix. Adam Khan right out against the pit lane barrier. So Le Lebanon has got up to 14th place, having started 18th. A good game slide there from Portugal. Brazil in the background also. A little bit of trouble. It's South Africa leading. France second. Mexico third. The Netherlands in fourth. Switzerland running in fifth place. Then it's Germany, Ireland, New Zealand in eighth, Great Britain in ninth, and India in tenth position. Well, there's the top six. You can see nobody's made a move except for the Netherlands and Sweden and Switzerland. Well, they've been the, the victims of that. They're down from fourth to fifth. The Netherlands up to fourth place. Oliver Jarvis for Team GBR. Great Britain running in ninth place currently. And, uh, well, just trying to see if he can pick up the places a little bit over the next few laps. This is a replay of the start. That was a wild, wild start. I mean, I would expect the cars to be held much more bunched as they came down out of turn 11, but that's the way they went. And they let them go. But look, you can see on the replay how wide it was. Mexico trying to dive down the inside. And then with well, Switzerland running high. And yeah, that was a chance that was for the Netherlands. I mean, that was really there. very close. There we are, on board with the Netherlands. Yeah, let's see how it worked for him. There was a wide line from Yanni for Switzerland, and that was good from Jeroen Bleekabon. He tucked it up the inside, and basically then... It, and Switzerland still had the edge, but of course Netherlands was on the inside for the right-hand kick. Yeah, and, and turning right, you've got no option. The car on the inside's got the racetrack. Car on the outside, but wants to take the corner, will take himself and the other car out. South Africa beginning to ease away up front. 1.8 seconds ahead, and Netherlands now has caught back up towards Mexico once again. Remember, all these guys are still getting used to a dry track for the first time this weekend. Wet throughout practice, wet throughout qualifying, and now they've got to get used to driving on slicks for the first time this year. Last yeah, they might have had some running, but there, Chris Jajian, for example, in the Lebanese car. Well, first time he's driven the place in the dry at all. He's never been here before. Well, it's the most competitive we have seen Lebanon since the days of Graham Rahal and that car. Look at those big clouds just at the back of the dunes. Here it's much better sky, but just keep an eye. The weather may still have a factor here. Down on the inside. Oh, into turn one tires and a good pass. And that's on China. Alex Jung and Frankie Cheng, but Cheng's not going to give up. He did give up. That was the replay of that a moment ago. And Malaysia now in uh, 16th position as a result of that. They started 20th, Malaysia, so he's gained a few places in the opening laps. Remember, this is the sprint race. It's relatively short, but you still get now the same number of points for this as you will for the longer feature race. 15 points going to the winner of this race. So it's crucial to make up as many places as possible. On the pit wall, Jan Lammers watching to see whether Jeroen Bleekermollen's going to be able to attack Mexico for a podium finish here. And he's definitely in the slipstream as they head down the straight, down towards Tars, and he's going to go for the inside. Here comes the Netherlands, late for late breaking. Now can he hold it? Yes, what a great move by Jeroen Bleekermollen. Absolutely fantastic. Perfect position coming into the corner, and Mexico didn't try to block that move. They thought they had enough power, enough speed down in that corner, but they didn't under well, they underestimated what for Bleekermollen and his knowledge is worth, and that was what local knowledge is worth. He knew he could go very, very deep. Once he got there, then he had control of the corner and Mexico was very much that, the, the consequence of that. Look, down the inside, here's the head on view. And Mexico tried to come down, but nowhere to go. A little whiff of smoke from the tire from the Netherlands car, but a superb pass excellently executed yeah that was lovely south africa though look john and, and, and what a lead two and a half seconds for adrian Zaug already steaming away into the distance there's france in second now france could be under threat here from the netherlands who have got past mexico switzerland still running fifth germany then ireland new zealand has gained a place new zealand uh, ahead no sorry they were already ahead of great britain it's jarvis who's beginning yeah, to but new, but new zealand did get ahead of great britain we didn't see it but Somewhere around the circuit that did happen. There's it again defence from New Zealand as Oliver Jarvis tries to get alongside into turn nine and he's going to take the position back again. Both oh. have given each other working room on the exit of nine. Easy to run the other car wide and a good pass by Oliver Jarvis undoing what was done to him a moment or two earlier. Well, good racing as you say between these two. They've got a lot of respect for one another but they had to fight for every inch of the road there. Team GBR then back into eighth place. Netherlands now running in third position as we know, chasing France and that's how close the battle for second is. Look at it through Tarzan. And the Netherlands were on the power boost coming down the street trying to use that extra 30 horsepower to give them themselves the same kind of slingshot that they did with the Mexico team one lap ago. There's no doubt the Dutch car looks fantastic in the dry and the French car just moving around a bit. Loic Duval checking his mirrors, wanting to see where that orange car is because he knows he's under threat for second place here. The Netherlands looking racy and here comes Jerome Bleekemolen through one of the faster sections. Yeah, into turn five, it's a 250 kilometer per hour approach. As you get to the top of the hill, then the road just falls away and turns to the right. 
Blake Mullen tried to make a move there in the opening lap, couldn't get it done. But the French car, Loic Duval, too wary, too wise to allow that to happen. But again, trying to get the French car out of position, timing one way, then the other way, trying to control the French car, make Duval look at his mirror, see what, what uh, Blake Mullen is doing, and a consequently try to control him. Well, let's see whether Blake Mullen's going to be able to do something as they build up towards the main straight again. Still got to get through the S's here. Very tight and twisty. You need good traction. And France just managed to edge away a little bit into that corner. And it's through the next couple of bends that it's crucial that Blake Mullen tacks up behind the French car and then uses the slipstream. I'm not sure he's going to be close enough this time. No, he's not. Again, it will need to see whether he really gets onto the main straight if they're going to go with power boost or not. He's used, he's all. used them all. They're yeah. all gone. Yeah, he's used all his power boost as Netherlands he's used them well but it means that overtaking is going to be that much more difficult now for Team Netherlands to try and take that second place away from France further back we've still got Mexico fourth Switzerland in fifth place and then behind them Germany Ireland Great Britain New Zealand and India completing the top 10 and points all the way down to 10th in the sprint race in the meantime Adrian Zagan South Africa almost Five seconds there, you can see, there's the South Africa, there is France, and that is, well, 4.7 as they came across the line, rounded up to five seconds, and that's the advantage that uh, South Africa has got. Ireland in seventh place, they've consolidated their starting position, so a top ten finish for Ireland for goodness knows how long. Yeah, no, that would be great news for them. And Ireland, uh, India, rather, in the points as well. They're in 10th position. Australia started from the pit lane. Still at the back at the moment. But look, great little gaggle of cars here. Ian Dyke trying to get past Buddy Rice for Team USA. And just ahead of them, Canada trying to get past Indonesia. Hinchcliffe much quicker, potentially, than Indonesia. He's going to get alongside there. Good chance here for Canada. Couldn't quite complete it there. Well, that was good defence of the corner by Indonesia. But, of course, it puts the Canadian car slightly out of position. We've got Buddy Rice for USA you can end Dyke for Australia and each driver sort of moving around trying to position himself to gain advantage in doing so he's opening up another opportunity for a car that's following well this is good fun racing it's towards the back of the field but nevertheless it's very very close new driver Satrio Humanto for Team Indonesia Hinchcliffe in the Canadian car a lot more red on that car this year and then uh, we've got the others behind we've got Buddy Rice here we're riding on board with him for Team USA and then tucked in behind him is Team Australia's Ian Dyke and they're all heading up towards the, the sweeping right-hander and the long straight and that's where Canada could be in position here John might be close enough perhaps to attack well that's a possibility whether he's got any power boost remaining look he's getting into the slipstream Indonesia's going from left to right to defend the corner Canada's going to swoop out there he goes can he get the wrong way round Indonesia late in the brakes but watch for Canada trying to come down and get underneath on the exit of Tarzan corner can't get it done. I'm impressed with Amanto. First ever race in an A1 GP car. He's as brave as anybody on the brakes down there because Hitchcliffe is uh, pretty determined. So that was impressive from Team Indonesia's new driver. And uh, meanwhile, frustrated at the back of the group is Ian Dyke for Team Australia. Meanwhile, also South Africa still leading by that big margin over five seconds. It's France and the Netherlands battling for second place ahead of Mexico and Switzerland. Then Germany, Ireland, Great Britain and New Zealand. And we reckon there's around six laps to go in this race. It's a 19 minute plus a lap race. And uh, it looks as though we've got six laps or so to go, about half distance at the moment. Yes, eight minutes and 40 seconds of the race remaining in terms of time, then plus a lap or six laps to go, whichever is going to come the sooner. And I suspect it's going to be the six laps we're going to see the uh, chequered flag come out. Zaug across the line. He's certainly driven beautifully from pole position, hasn't he? He's had the fastest lap in the race. That's worth an extra point. Then it's second place France, third for the Netherlands, chased by Mexico and Switzerland, then Germany, Ireland and Great Britain, all sort of concertinaing up together a little bit. There could be some changes here before well, the end. First, sorry, second place through to seventh place. They're all running in the moment at 30.5s, almost doing identical lap times. It's only Adrian Zaug who was running in the 28s, then the 29s, who's now backed off to the low 30s, who's controlling this race. I tell you what, Team GBR actually had the fastest lap of that last lap at 30.0, quicker even than Zao, who is leading. It's not the fastest lap overall, no. Zao set that earlier on. No, but of course, he's now finding himself in the heart of this battle. He's running behind Ireland. Ireland's lap was 30.5, half a second quicker was this man we're on board with, Oliver Jarvis. He will then drop back to the speed of the Team Ireland car. He had the benefit of the run up to it, unless he can continue that momentum and sweep past. Oh, he's, he's having a look down the inside. No, oh, is he going to squeeze? He has! He squeezed by! And that looked too easy for me. <laughs> well, 
Furman, Ralph Furman there for Team Ireland being very cautious. I think he could perhaps have shut the door, but he saw the uh, Great Britain car getting nosing alongside, and Oliver Jarvis didn't need any second invitation. No, he, he made, he actually opened the door, he forced it open, but that's all about momentum. He carried that momentum with that extra half second lap time he had over Ireland, and instead of waiting for the gap to open up, he made the gap open up. That's the difference. You make it happen rather than wait for it to be inviting you to be invited to step into it. And Ireland immediately have dropped back by well over a second. Whether Ralph Furman is struggling a little bit with setup, but certainly Oliver Jarvis is on the march up to seventh place, and he is 1.8 seconds behind, getting into sixth place, and Christian Batoros is his next victim. We gather there may be a problem with the Ireland car. This was that manoeuvre, John, the overtaking pass. Yeah, I think Ralph Fairman saw that Oliver Jarvis was about to dive down the inside. He gave him room, and in doing so, he then opened, opened up the door for Jarvis to drive straight through. But maybe, as we mentioned, Ireland might have something that uh, is enabling them. They can't defend their position as strongly as they would like. And there, Tony Clements, big uh, fist in the air for Tony, the seat holder for Team GBR, as he saw Jarvis gain that place. Now, what's... Uh, happening here. We've still got Adrian Zalg leading comfortably for South Africa at the moment. The gap still some 5.4 seconds back to Team France and then the Netherlands and Mexico chasing on behind. I wonder if Great Britain's now going to be able to go on the attack of Germany. That would be next on their list. Germany currently running sixth. Great Britain now into seventh place having got past Ireland. Let's look back at that next group headed by France, Netherlands. Mexico, Switzerland, Germany, and there's the gap back to Great Britain. So we're in a situation where the gap between Germany and Great Britain on this lap is not a great deal different to how it has with Ireland and Great Britain. So whether uh, the momentum that we've seen from Great Britain can sweep them up to the tail of Germany, I suspect it's going to be a harder job to get past Christian Vitoros, because if there is a problem for Ireland, that might have been why Ralph Fairman was so generous to Oliver Jarvis. Just outside the points is Portugal and João Urbano, ahead of Italy and Brazil. The three cars running pretty close together. Let me tell you that Canada did get past Indonesia on the last lap after racing hard for, towards the back. Canada now up to 90 position by the way as Italy goes on the attack of Team Portugal Enrico Tocicella moves out of the slipstream to the outside is he going to go around the outside it is possible here at Zandvoort but Portugal's fending him off and he can't do it and I mean Portugal did the right thing they just let the car run up the racetrack Adam Kahn now coming up behind as that it's Brazil so Brazil trying to get into the action as well and seeing what was going to happen he read the situation pretty well he knew that Italy was going to struggle to get around the outside USA trying to get past Indonesia here. We saw that Canada had got past a lap or so ago. And now Buddy Rice trying to do likewise as they head down towards the second part of the lap into the hook and hold step in. And Australia tucked in there as well. So all very frenetic all around the racetrack. Adrian Zog, the man who's dominated this race, at five and a half second advantage. He's been, I suspect, told by the team, just hold station. Don't go any harder. You don't need to do any more. But look at back, this is looking back towards Team GBR from yeah. the Germany car. Look how close he is now. He certainly has closed up that gap as uh, Oliver Jarvis. New colours on the British car. The uh, blue and red much more distinct on the car. And you can certainly see it filling the camera mounted on the back of the German car. Now wait and see what happens when they come out of turn 11. That's going to be the critical corner because that's where the advantage will lie initially to Germany. But if Great Britain can get into the slipstream, not close enough at this part of the straight. If you look at the battle that goes on at the very front, pressure coming from the Netherlands and France and equally pressure coming on Germany from Great Britain. There could still be some changes here there's no doubt about it, it is tight in this group and there France, Netherlands and Mexico and Switzerland, anybody makes a mistake there and it could all change just a couple of laps to go and France is Loic Duval trying to hold on to second place Neil Yarny at the back of that group, one of the most experienced A1 GP competitors and a winner last year in Malaysia and it's the pace of France that really is controlling this battle directly behind they're all now running in the one minute 31s they all started in the low 30s got on the high 30s now they're in one minute 31 Lebanon trying to defend from Czech Republic it's another gaggle here with uh, Chris Alajajian ahead of Eric Yanis the Malaysia's in there so is China and Adam Khan for Pakistan's joined in the fun I mean it's frustrating if you're in this pack of cars because you're always being dictated the pace you can run out by the pace of the car that's ahead of you and unless you can afford to drop back and if you're in the middle of the pack you can forget about that so you're really being the pace of Lebanon is determining the pace of these following four cars. No pit stops in this race to worry about, but in the feature race later, the teams will have an influence on the outcome when they're running this close. Every tenth of a second in a pit stop will make a difference. Meanwhile, Germany and Great Britain still fighting hard for sixth place. Ireland still holding on in eighth place. Ralph Furman with... Uh, has he got any power boost? Yeah, he's yes, still Germany, got Germany and Great Britain have got one each. Yeah. 
so the power boost adding an extra 30 brake horsepower and if you want to use it it's got to be around now new zealand using their final one are also on the power boost heading down the main straight in towards tarzan it looks to me like germany and great britain are going to keep that single power boost shot they have for that last lap but the, the pace again germany able to control the pace not suffering from the pressure that we saw from ralph Fairman. so whatever oliver jarvis does wherever he places his car germany is ignoring it the final lap then and it's going to be a victory a very comfortable win for south africa there's no doubt about it the gap has opened up to seven seconds which is remarkable in only uh, in 12 laps uh, france of course have been busy defending but nonetheless this has been a fantastic performance I, by I, south I, africa mean, I, I can tell you now if adrian zag had driven at his race pace for the entire 12 laps he'd be even further ahead because once he got that five and a half second advantage he was able then to consolidate France clearly is not able to run at that pace. They're the ones that are dictating second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth positions at the pace of France. So Adrian Zag just drives the car through turn nine. No problems at all. Fastest lap as well. 128.353. Well, it's been a superb performance by Adrian Zag, the 20-year-old who won here at Zandvoort last year in the, the sprint race from pole position. And it looks like he's going to do it again, but by such an emphatic margin, one of the biggest margins surely in a sprint race that we've seen. Adrian Zal takes the victory for South Africa. He takes the first win of season three of A1 GP World Cup of Motorsport. Second goes to France, third to the Netherlands. It's a podium for the host nation. Mexico is fourth, Switzerland fifth, Germany sixth, and they're followed by Great Britain, Ireland, New Zealand, and the final point in the top ten goes to A1 Team India. Celebrations down there for the South African crew. Fantastic performance by Adrian Zal. He really was peerless. Nobody had an answer for him, but the Dutch fans are excited too because they've got a podium finish in the first event of the new season. And Jeroen Bleekemolen out of the car already, shaking everybody's hand down there. Everybody wants a part of his success and he's going to make the most of it. He came so close to getting on the podium here last year and now he's done it. But there's our winner, Adrian Zaug. There's no little jig this time like there was after qualifying because he knows there's still some work to be done here today. But he's wrapped up the maximum points for this race, the 15 points for the win and the point for fastest lap as well. Jeroen Bleekemolen already explaining how they can make the car even faster to Jan Lammers, no doubt, for the feature race later on this afternoon but he must be well pleased having started in fifth place to come home with that podium finish so the drivers uh, are waiting to come out on the podium teams down below of course france have got something to celebrate as well but there he is adrian zal big smile for him second place going to team france to loic duval and third place of course to jeroen bleekemolen and uh, <laughs> he is full of beans about that one big big smile from the dutchman Tremendous reaction from the crowd here, and it's the presentation time now for the medals to be handed over. Bronze medal going to Jeroen Bleekemolen, who has uh, got that podium finish that he came so close to getting here in the first season that A1 visited Zandvoort. Loic Duval, second place for Team France. Still a major threat, I think, this year. Uh, they want to try and take the title again, as they did in the first season. But it's Adrian Zal who loves this Zandvoort circuit. He won the sprint race here last year, and he's done it again this time. Joining me now, a very happy Adrian Zug. What a commanding performance. You've repeated last year's feat, but you did it in such style today. Your car and yourself looked amazingly fast out there. Yeah, definitely. We prepared a really good car for today and yesterday in the wet conditions. And we show we can be competitive in both conditions, so it's looking good. In second position was Loic de Val for Team France. Look, how frustrating was that when you watching Adrian getting further and further away in front of you? I mean, the first two, three laps, we were quite on the same level and then the car was a bit difficult to drive we had a more over and over steering so I couldn't follow him so and then the, the team Netherlands I mean they were they were just behind us so my strategy was just to, to keep the second position which one was not too difficult because uh, I still had uh, some some push to pass and uh, he, he doesn't so that's it but it's, anyway it's the second place but we have to work a lot on the car if we want to come back on the podium this afternoon. Congratulations Jerome Blake and Team Netherlands. 
What does it feel like to have a podium at your home race? Yeah, it's great. I mean, yesterday we really messed up the qualifying for the for the feature race. So uh, I hope that at least I could take the podium in this one. And then you've got this this one in the back. And then hopefully the next one we can fight also away back to the front. But I think it looks good because the car was fantastic. We had a quick car. And on the feature race, differences will be bigger because the tires go off more. So you can overtake a bit easier. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, the sun has come out and there's a celebration going on in the grandstands as the Dutch fans enjoy that third place. Let's run through the results. South Africa winning then from France and the Netherlands. Mexico finished in fourth place ahead of Switzerland. Germany held off Great Britain to the end. Ireland took eighth place ahead of New Zealand, with India finishing in tenth place for the final point. Portugal just outside the points in 11th. Italy in 12th position. And then it's Brazil, Lebanon, the Czech Republic in 15th ahead of Malaysia, with China and Pakistan next. And fastest lap went to South Africa. So they got the perfect score with the pole position, the victory and fastest lap.